Good morning everybody, my name is uh, Raffaele Vitale and I'm Associate Professor at the University of Lille in uh, France and today I would like to show you how to perform a principal component analysis on a generic dataset uh, using the software tool MATLAB. Suppose we have already loaded into the MATLAB workspace the dataset we want to analyze. In this particular case, such a dataset is named X and should be organized in a data table such that every single row of this data table contains the values of the parameters or the variables that we have measured for any given object or sample assessed in our particular case study, in our particular scenario. Here, X contains the values of the concentration or abundance of 10 different chemical elements measured by means of an X-ray based analytical platform in 75 obsidian samples of archaeological interest. Notice that the MATLAB workspace in this case contains two additional arrays, the first one SL containing a sort of identification code for the 75 obsidian samples characterized, and the second one VL containing the symbol of the 10 chemical elements measured in the aforementioned uh, obsidian samples. Now, the first step to conduct before decomposing by principal component analysis the dataset under study is to pre-process it, namely to center and scale to unit variants each one of its corresponding columns. This operation is also called autoscaling. In order to perform autoscaling, we need to execute the MATLAB command displayed now on screen. The first part of this command performs what is also known as the column centering of X, while the division on the right side part of this equation carries out the scaling to unit variance of all its individual columns. Uh, once executed this command by the button Enter, a new data array is generated, XAS, containing actually the auto scale values resulting from the initial dataset X. Now it's time to perform the principal component analysis decomposition of our autoscale data contained in XAS. For this purpose, we will exploit the MATLAB function SVD, carrying out the singular value decomposition of the target dataset. Executing the second MATLAB command displayed now on screen by once again pressing the button Enter will lead to the generation of three new arrays in the MATLAB workspace S, U and B, from which actually PCA scores and loadings can be estimated. PCA loadings are already encoded in the array V and thus they are readily uh, explorable and interpretable. Uh, PCA scores, on the other hand, need to be estimated uh, from the multiplication of U and S, as the third MATLAB command now shows. Uh, by pressing again Enter, uh, we obtain a new array T, and in the MATLAB workspace we have now available both PCA scores and loadings. Loadings, T and V respectively, resulting from the decomposition of our autoscale data XAS. It's now time to graphically represent and visualize the outcomes proceeding from our principal component analysis. To this end, we can resort to these six different MATLAB command lines displayed now on screen for the representation of at least the first two principal components extracted from our original dataset. By pressing once again the button Enter, uh, we will be immediately provided with two different graphical representation. The PCA scores plot on the left and the PCA loading plot on the right, uh, resulting from the decomposition of our initial dataset that's really minimally autoscaled. The PCA scores plot can be used to infer the existence or the presence of specific groupings or clusters among the 75 obsidian samples we characterized in this particular case study. On the other hand, the PCA loading plot can be exploited to infer the existence of correlations, negative or positive, among the 10 different variables we measured in this particular scenario. That is to say, the concentration of the 10 different chemical elements we talked about before. 
Should you finally be interested in the amount of original data variance explained by the two represented principal components, this last MATLAB command can be run. By pressing once again the button Enter, one can observe that these two principal components account for approximately 52 and 21% of the original data variance, respectively.